What's up guys, it's Jake here from Chief Life Gaming today, kicking off a, a little challenge for myself. This is the 100 Orc Challenge, stemming off of one of my more, uh, I would say, popular slash helpful videos I made about a year ago, a speed painting video for an Orc War Boss. Some of you that have been following the channel may remember that video that I made where I talked about basically uh, painting up an orc model as fast as as you could with as few steps as you could to get it to look nice and playable. So that's the goal here uh, with this video. I have a hundred orcs as you may have guessed. The 100 orc challenge does in fact have 100 models and uh, we have 20 boys here, 20 boys here, 20 burnas, 10 ludas, uh, a mixture of knobs and mechs here for 10 more models. Looks like one may be, a couple may be missing somewhere. Uh, five commandos. These are the pewter models. And then 15 grots. So there are 100 in total. And my goal here is to get these to a tabletop standard. So nothing fancy. You know, we're not looking to do a ton of like edge highlighting or anything like that. But the, the my, my goal here is eventually I do want to be able to do that. So I want to paint these models in a way that allows headroom for me to expand and come back to them later and add more detail to make them a higher standard but for right now when I'm painting this many I just want to get them all playable basically so what I like to think of that as is as stage one so if over here your models are unpainted right and if, as you move across the the scale here on the right side of the screen we're done with the models they are completed stage one falls somewhere in the middle we want to get these models three color minimum, you know, playable, uh, where we're happy with them, we can look at them and say, okay, these, these have paint on them, maybe they're not quite finished, but they look good, they look playable, they are acceptable. So, that's what we're shooting for, somewhere in the middle here, so keep that in mind, we can expand on it later, but we don't have to. These can sit for a year, for, for however long, and they are perfectly acceptable as is. So, um, let's see, what I want to do is talk to you guys about uh, primer choice or base coating choice. So the, the whole thought process behind speed painting here is that we are taking this, this base color, which is basically a, a tan or an ivory or a white sort of tan color. And I did this purposely because in my last video, I had a lot of people asking me what color exactly that I used. And it really doesn't matter that much. As you can see, these are a little darker. As we move over here, these are kind of more uh, a, a tan and then these are almost uh, ivory or white color a very white tan and they're all gonna look pretty similar in the end so my whole point here is that it doesn't matter exactly what kind of color you use for your tan just use like a khaki tan or a, a sand yellow or something that you may have uh, already to base coat your models. I did this with an airbrush. You could very easily do uh, this with a spray can. Uh, these were actually done with a spray can quite a while ago. You can see, of course, spray primer not quite as um, desirable as using an airbrush, but much faster and much more accessible. So, get them all base coated into this tan. Now, from here, the reason we're using tan is because it's very uh, effective to tint this color with glazes or washes to get most of the desired colors that we want for our orcs. So what we're going to do is use a green wash to get the skin. We're going to use a brown or sepia wash to do the leather and then the only part we're gonna have to physically paint by number is the metallic. So those are going to be our three colors. Again, three color minimum, tabletop standard. Two of them will be done with washes. I like the wash or the glaze because it does give a little bit of shade. You know, you'll, the, the glaze will settle in the recesses of the skin. It will give us some shading. It's very quick and easy to paint. You just need one quick layer of it. It paints on very nicely, very quickly, very easily. Uh, and settles in those recesses, gives us some quick shading and kind of pseudo highlights. So it does look very good as a sort of a, a good bang for your buck uh, technique. So what I want to do now, guys, I'm going to take one of these models and what I'm going to do is do each of the steps and talk to you guys about them. 
show you what it looks like at the end and then kind of uh, show you what I'm doing to set the groundwork for the stage two which is going to be more over on this side of the spectrum or to complete them and why uh, this works so well for that. So I'll be back to you guys in just a second. Okay guys so here we are this is going to be a four-step process. Step one is of course to base coat in the primer color or the tan that we talked about previously. So step one. Step two we're going to work on the skin. So this is what uh, the effect that I got by using Citadel's Biotan Green Shade very simple to paint with uh, something like a shade like this. It brushes on very nicely, very easily, and very quickly. So, you know, you're only looking at maybe a minute or so to get this skin fully painted. You want to be careful not to muck up the edges like I did here because it's going to be a little harder uh, to cover up when you're using glazes over the same color as other areas. You don't want the green to get into where your leather is going to be because you're going to see that later. So just try to be neat. But again, we're speed painting here, so we're not looking for perfection. So if you don't have Citadel's uh, brand, this is Vallejo. It's just a green ink. You could also use something like this from Army Painter, a green tone. You get the idea. Any green ink, shade, or glaze should give you a very similar result to this skin here. A little bit of shading looks okay, right? So we've got the skin done. Now we're going to pick out some of the metallic areas of the model. So things like the the weapon, the melee weapon, the pistol of the Orc Boys, and uh, you can see additionally here I've hit this little emblem on his chest. There are also a lot of buckles and little uh, like almost um, rivets on the leather armor that you could choose to pick out if you want. It's just kind of a time thing. How much time do you want to put into it? So kind of keep that in the back of your head. So for this I used Vallejo's Model Air black metal. This is black metal. Uh, the reason I use such a dark metallic instead of something like Lead Belcher is because again this is going to be stage one but I want to leave myself some headroom to highlight this and to get a lot of sort of bang for my buck from uh, a highlight. So by using a very dark base color for the metallic, by using a very light metallic color for highlights later, we're going to get a maximum amount of contrast with minimal effort. We don't need to shade this or glaze this down before we highlight. Uh, we can just highlight it right from here. So that's kind of why I chose this dark metal like this. So. That will be step three, the metallics. Well, you can really do these in any order you want. I'm just showing you the way I do it. And then the, the final step for the stage one paint job that we're talking about here is going to be to hit all of the remaining areas of the model with uh, a brown wash ink or shade. So what I used in this example is Vallejo's Sepia ink. A very popular choice would probably be Agrax or Shade by Citadel. Again, Army Painter, I believe their their brown is called Strong Tone. Any brown uh, wash, basically, you can get your hands on. So hopefully this is focusing okay for you guys. Uh, again, very fast. You can see that I pretty much covered everything that wasn't painted already in this brown wash and it gives us a nice dirty grungy sort of leather look that almost looks shaded uh, but you know didn't take us a whole lot of time so this is what I would call stage one he's ready to go uh, if I think what I'm probably also going to do is hit the eyes just because I feel like that really finishes off the model and and makes them look a lot more um, acceptable when you hit the eyes with a red or something that will call this stage one and complete. So uh, from here what I'd like to do is basically do my 100 orcs and see how long it takes me to get them all to this stage and then add the eyes in. So uh, to get them all sort of, let's let's pan back out a little bit here, 
all to this stage, which is uh, the just the, the base coated or primed stage. It took me about three hours. So I'm three hours in so far, and I'm going to, to do all the rest of the steps and kind of report back to you in part two of this little video series. So what I want you guys to do right now is to comment down below. Let me know if this technique, this speed painting sort of glaze or or wash technique has been helpful for you. Uh, there are a lot of other ways you can utilize the same technique with different colors. Uh, if you are painting, say you want to do this, but you want to get a blue, you know, you for example, you could base coat in white instead of tan, and then throw a, a blue glaze over the white, and you'll get a really nice blue color uh, that you can use for things like blue horrors or uh, Thousand Suns, or you know any Zinch models, things like that. Uh, very cool effects. Uh, so let me know how you guys utilize speed painting in your projects. If you like it, if you don't like it, um, let me know down below. I'm very curious, and I hope this has been interesting and helpful. If you guys do want to see more tutorials and battle reports and just content in general out of my channel, please consider checking out Patreon linked below to uh, make help make that happen and really guys I just want to thank you for all the support continuing just watching my videos it means a lot to me comments I really do enjoy them so uh, in part two of the series again guys we're gonna take this this sort of stage one and I'm gonna show you guys how I bump it up a notch I'm gonna kick it up to stage two or or sort of a tabletop plus level we're gonna highlight and we're going to build on this base that we've started to get them up to a pretty good standard with very minimal efforts. As sort of a benchmark, guys, this stage one here, I would have to say took me about five minutes to paint this guy to this level. Uh, so not bad at all if we look at something like painting 100 orcs five minutes each, 500 minutes, you know, that's not too bad something like you know math eight hours or so right eight eight and a little change uh, to paint a hundred models uh, without basing but uh, we're gonna do some kind of quick technique for basing as well probably just sand or something like that to get these on the table and ready to go for Warhammer 8th edition so uh, I hope you guys again enjoy the content let me know how you like this technique. Probably nothing new to some of you guys. Maybe uh, it is to some others. I know that again the other video I made covering a very similar style of painting was very popular and sort of helpful to a lot of orc players out there. Again uh, this is adaptable for many other color schemes. You can do purple, red, yellow, uh, you know orange takes very well, blue to some kind of techniques like this. So feel free to request other styles that you guys would like to see down in the comments below. I can either respond with what, how I would do it in the comment section or consider making a video for you in the future to cover the technique and uh, sort of give you guys a look. So what we're looking at is about eight hours as a, a projected time. I've got about three hours in so far so a total time of roughly 10 to 11 hours to paint 100 orcs. We'll see how it long it actually takes me. In part two, I'll check in with you guys. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see how that goes for me. And uh, we'll go from there. If you want to take a guess, down in the comment section, see how uh, close you are. Put a time down there and see how many hours you think it's going to actually take me. I may be overestimating my ability here or... Uh, and maybe not. We'll just have to see. So thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a great day. Bye now.